Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Today we're going to be building the 135th scale M1151 from Academy. Uh, this kit came out not too long ago, so it should be really nice to put together, and it'll look really good along some of our other modern armor that we just recently built. So let's get started on it. starting to build the uh, front bumper and as you do uh, you're gonna have to be a little bit careful in this area because there is some really really ultra fine molded pieces some of the little hooks and things hopefully they show up on the camera there we go but really really nicely molded but very very tiny so just be very careful especially cutting them off it appears that Academy did give you a couple extras of some of the hooks that if you do happen to damage one uh, based on just the number that are turning up on the sprue, so that's always a uh, a positive. As I'm beginning to glue some of the parts of the front end together, I uh, just wanted to show you how the fit on some of these are. This is, goes on the bottom, that's why there's still an injection pin mark, but this whole little piece up front is made up of five different parts. And the fit is very, very tight and strong on it and really, really adds some nice detail. Sometimes it scares me when I see some of these little tiny parts, but the fit is very, very, sorry about that, the fit is very, very good. and. Uh, it's going to really turn out to be a nice model. One quick note too, uh, the next step involves putting the, the wheels together with the hubs and then gluing them on and getting the wheels on the actual vehicle. I'm going to skip that step because I'm going to actually paint the, the individual parts separately, the hubs, and then that's so when we glue it together we'll have that much less painting to have to worry about. We're going to start uh, work on the interior now. and This is part of the uh, the engine wall, glue that in. Also, I went ahead and glued the uh, gas cap in there in a really nice detail, glues up from behind. Now, what I'm gonna do here is, the seats are all gonna be put into place, but I put the seats on a separate piece because we're gonna paint those separately, but all the bases we're gonna glue in because they're gonna be the inside body color. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. And then we can start attaching the front windshield and then I'll put in all of the seats as well, as well as all the other bracing.
Also, as you go to attach some of the gear shift levers and things like that, that is a good time to have some locking tweezers because you can hold it because if not, they end up flying all over the room. As I begin to install the, uh, the dash of this car, um, really want to compliment Academy on the fit of this kit because although there are quite a few parts in it, in fact like the dash itself has about 15 parts in it alone including all these little tiny ones, everything is fit together very very well. In fact when you put stuff on most of it just drops into place and sometimes almost even locks and I was just even noticing just dry fitting the body here it pops into place perfectly because of the way everything lines up which is very very impressive that if you're gonna have a kit with a lot of parts it's very very helpful that everything fits properly one other point I'll make to you I was looking ahead at the instructions and I've left out all of the glass uh, and that'll be the true on the doors as well as the windshield all those other pieces I just think it's gonna be way easier to paint after you know before putting the glass in uh, and then the way everything looks like the glass should just pop right in anyway so we shouldn't have any problem and I was looking further ahead even on the doors that shouldn't be a problem as well I'm putting the uh, side armor plate on and just want to point out to you that the way the uh, the fit and finish of this kit is is very reminiscent of the uh, the M1A2 Tusk variant that I just built recently from Academy which in my opinion for the price and for the quality is the best Abrams on the market right now um, and everything just lines up really well fits together really well it looks like the same engineering team that worked on this worked on the uh, the tusk as well um, everything just lines up very very good I was just editing the footage a few seconds ago and I noticed that I hadn't pushed the dash all the way into place. I hadn't glued it yet either so it wasn't a big deal but you'll notice there was a little bit of a uh, of a gap in there. The gap wasn't actually there I just hadn't pushed the uh, the dash all the way down. Now and I hadn't glued it yet either so now that it's pushed in I've glued it into place and you can see the fit that I was talking about. Let me show you how I'm going to approach the doors. I've glued on like the handle and the, the window frames and some of the inside pieces. What we're going to do is we're going to just glue these into place without the, uh, the window itself inside. So later on after we do all the painting we'll be able to put the window in and we'll paint this outer shield separately so we'll be able to just tack that into place. That way we're not trying to mask the windows inside this other frame which would be kind of difficult to do. So. I'm going to go ahead and assemble all the doors and glue them into place. And as you can see, we started to put some of the radios, whoop, some of the other radios and other pieces inside as well. Quite a bit of detail inside of this kit. I've installed all of the doors and the outside of the, uh, the handles. Now we're going to attach the tailgate and the, uh, the back of the driver's compartment here. Just attach that in like that. What I've done for the last couple of hours was started attaching all the the off the all little parts and things like that, like the risers on the uh, bulletproof armor. Now it looks like it's all assembled, but what I've done is I've actually made this so that all of this can come apart, so that we can do all the painting. And if we zoom back here, you can see I've got all the parts ready to paint up here: the wheels, the uh, the inside, excuse me, the wheels, the tires, the seats, the 50 cal. All of that stuff is ready to go, so we'll be able to just do some outside painting, uh, put the parts together, seal it up, and then we can start weathering it. Uh, the overall, now that I'm actually done with the uh, general assembly, the kit fits together incredibly. And I know I was talking a lot about that earlier, but I was very, very sh um, surprised at how well everything fit together, especially when there were some really complicated angles and pieces like that that go together that can sometimes be a little bit of a pain. Now, you also notice, too, I did leave all the glass out, but because we 
have the ability just to pull all this apart, it should be real easy just to pop it right back in. And we'll have all like our side view mirrors up on top that we need to paint, things like that. Now I am going to go over it one more time right now and just do a little bit of finished sanding to make sure I didn't miss any areas. We'll shoot it with our NATO black coat first to to uh, see if there's any flaws on it and then we'll do our black and white coat because we are going to do a desert camo on this and the black and white will really really show off uh, fading of paint and things like that so what I'm going to do now is like I said I'm going to finish up the sanding and then we'll start off while I'm painting so we have everything ready to go and I've got my Tamiya XF69 NATO black in the airbrush and we're going to put a coat over the entire thing especially the wheels but we're also going to take all these pieces apart as well as we paint Next, I mixed up a batch of NATO green and XF26 deep green to make an interior green color that we're going to paint the inside of this with. We've got the, uh, the green laid down. I've also painted the, uh, the chair is just a slightly lighter green because I noticed in all the pictures that I saw that, that it's a similar green but because it's fabric it's always a little bit lighter. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the, the white technique using just Tamiya XF2 and we're going to highlight a lot of the panels. Now I've gotten a few questions recently saying why, why take the time and why don't you just do this the black only. I actually find that it's quicker just to paint the entire vehicle black. It goes real fast. It wastes People are saying, well, waste paint, but really doesn't. It uses so little paint to paint a model with an airbrush. Uh, we also will go back inside and paint all of the interior, the parts like the radio, the screens, and the actual dash should be black as well, So, and the steering wheel, things like that. But we're going to do that after we do the white technique, and we're also going to do it all over the tops of the uh, top of the vehicle as well. So I'm going to start putting the white on right now. I've painted all the highlight areas now, and what we're going to do is you're going to use a mixture of XF57 buff and XF59 desert yellow to create a light sand color that is going to be painted over the entire model. Now that we have our paint ready, we also want to be very, very careful not to get any overspray inside the interior. Now, although there's not a lot of visible view through the, uh, through the windows, we don't want to see any big tan spots. We want to go really really lightly and just kind of mist it on. That way we won't be just covering up all the black and white technique that we just take time to put on. But you can also hopefully see how you can see there's bright spots in the middle and a little darker areas on there. Now you can adjust this to however you want. If you want to make a really beat up vehicle, you can do it less. Now don't forget we're also going to be putting clear coat on that that's going to slightly darken the paint. And then also we're going to be weathering over that too. So that'll change a lot of the tones. But this starts off as a nice base for it. I've glued up the, uh, the tires and wheels together and put the spare on the back. And now these, these do have poly caps, so these can come off very easily when we're gonna do some weathering on the inside there. But I just wanted to show you how the vehicle can look just like it's beat up and worn, and we haven't really even done any weathering yet on it. So I'm going to clear coat the entire vehicle right now, then we'll start working on the interior. Okay, on the inside of the sidewall here, we're going to put a coat of the desert dust wash just to kind of wet the entire area. And then taking a mixture of Vallejo pigments of light sienna and just a touch of the dark yellow ochre we mix together. 
we're going to just start to push and blend it into the outer sidewall here. We'll work on the sidewall first and then start working on the track. Now it looks a little heavy right now because we're just blending it into the sides. And don't forget it's going to dry flat as well. And taking a little more powder we can start rubbing it into the, uh, the tread itself. And using our other side that's dry you can start knocking off. You can just see how the top of the tread will show up dark, but you'll leave a, a layer of mud and dirt on the inside. What I'm doing next here is I'm, I'm putting a little bit of enamel thinner down and I'm using a little enamel streaking grime and what we're going to do is we're going to use that as a pin wash to go over all the bolts and although it is a more of a darker brown it just will highlight all of the bolts very very nicely as well as the wheel wells things like that. I'm going to show you one to one about how I actually put this on speed wise, one to one speed. Uh, that way you'll know that it's a matter of putting a little bit of the thinner on the bolt and then, then putting a little bit of the other, uh, the actual uh, enamel wash, and then streaking it slowly and, and blending. And it just takes a little bit of time, but I think it adds a really nice effect to it.
gone ahead and installed all of the bulletproof glass on the on the turret and also we had to paint all around the outside edges on that I've also taken a little clear red and done all the marker lights all the way around uh, we've let the, uh, the the wash dry. I was going to go ahead and put a dust coat on it, but I was liking so much the way the uh, black and white coat made it look kind of like a faded, already kind of dusty look to begin with. So I think I'm, I think I'm just going to leave it exactly the way it is. Uh, overall, the kit was phenomenal. Fit together wonderfully. Had zero problems with anything going together. Super, super detailed. The entire interior... Uh, which you saw me build most of it. I didn't super detail the inside because if you look in there, it's really hard to see with the bulletproof glass any type of real detail. You can see that it's in there, but beyond that, I didn't want to waste too much time uh, working on that portion. But really, really loved the uh, the kit and was very happy to do it. And it'll look really good with my other modern armor. So want to thank you as always for watching and uh, please stay tuned because we have more videos coming.